So where are you headed? We're heading to Chris and Gifford. They have no other relatives, so we're taking them to a house in the country. Hello, welcome to What the Flick, and Happy New Year. We're going to start off the year right with a shitty horror sequel <laughs> called The Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death, No Colon. There's no colon. So it might no. just, it could also be Woman in Black to Angel of Death. <laughs> Ooh, like step up to the, to street. the streets. <laughs> or step exactly. up to the streets. It works either way. I wish it was that interesting. But we have William Bibiani here with us and Alonzo Duraldi. I'm Christy. And we're going to talk about Woman in Black 2. Please describe the plot to us. Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death. Yes. Sorry. All right. So uh, the woman in black, she's still hanging around that house. Uh, now there's a bunch of kids in the house. It's World War II. They're escaping uh, the Blitz. And the woman's going to do some stuff. Let's check it out. <laughs> Does anybody else live on the island? The place has been deserted for years. There it is, Hill Marsh House. So cold in here. Everybody into your beds. Get the children to the cellar. Now. In the marsh lies a house, abandoned for years. That hides the darkness beyond all fears. She never forgives. She always comes back. There is no escaping the woman in black. Went to a matinee of this yesterday because this was not screened right beforehand. Or uh, no, it was actually oh, weirdly I was, enough. I was in Canada. That's okay. my experience. Yeah, you were yeah. skiing. You don't, you, you don't know. I was in Canada. You I was not. skiing yeah. in Banff as one does, and um, I so I missed it. So I went to a matinee of it yesterday. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh. But, but I was shocked at like from a production value standpoint. This movie looks pretty spectacular, like better than it has a right it's to. It's a Hammer movie, you know, and those oh. guys, uh, I mean, and I think the, even the new Hammer, like the old Hammer, they get the appeal or the, the importance of atmosphere, mm -hmm. and they pour it on. I mean, and, and I liked the first woman in black pretty well. I did too, Daniel Radcliffe. I, yeah. I don't trust your opinion anymore, um, <laughs> You liked The Quiet Ones, which was also a I liked The movie. Quiet Ones better than most people. Okay. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying anything against Hammer. Hammer can be great. Right. Hammer's totally, totally fine. I thought the first woman in black was just nothing but boo scares, just over and like, and then Daniel Radcliffe walking around a house, walking through rooms going, hmm, what? <laughs> really? no. Oh, okay. I, 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 I thought there was a sense of kind of gloom and hauntedness to his character that was interesting and that it wasn't just jump scares. This one is nothing but jump scares. Oh, I, I feel and the exact opposite way. Oh, my God. Beautifully photographed jump scares. Yes. Really? Which drove yeah. me at the wall because I, I love the idea of this movie. The idea that you have these characters who are already haunted going in. They have been surrounded by death. You have children whose parents have, been par have, have died in the bombing. You have a military guy who has an awful thing that happened to him. So they're all carrying around their own sort of personal demons. You know, the headmistress, her husband, and her grown sons are serving the military. You know, they, 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 the, the, the wartime thing, the, the kind of the death and the gloom of it all is used, I think, interestingly and could have led to a really interesting movie. But then it's just this sort of PG-13 bleh, bleh, bleh the whole time. And, and yeah. that's, they get, it gets old and it feels like it's betraying a cool idea and characters that would have led to a better movie. I wonder if they just don't trust themselves with just the pure drama of it. Letting that be unsettling in itself. And they feel like they have to have you know, the the false jump behind the door, they have to have like the woman going, ah, 
Um, one of the security guys at my kid's school keeps asking me, have you seen Woman in Black 2? <laughs> and he's like, have, what's it like? Do you see the witch a lot? Because I want to I want to see her. I want to see the ghost or whatever she is. And you see her. Yeah. So there is an audience. I guess what they, they're, they're smart in realizing there's an audience who wants to have that big, rah, that big shrieky scare. I'm amazed you saw. Me, I'm amazed you saw anything in this movie. This is one of the most <laughs> gloomily shot films. I felt like I was watching it through like soup all the time. And I, and I saw this the first time, and I'm like, "There's no way it's supposed to look like that. It's got to be a projection issue." So I went to another theater. Same exact issue. This this movie is. You saw the, this twice. I saw this twice just to make <laughs> wow. sure was because I wanted to make sure I could legitimately <laughs> complain about that if it wasn't a projection issue. Because there's a lot of this movie that is there. You know, there's ways to capture darkness. Some of them feel sometimes they feel false. Sometimes they're overly lit. Like oh, that candle's way too bright. Whatever. And here it seems like they're going for like a very naturalistic. That's just really dark, and you can barely make out what's going on in the background. So if something moves, it's really really scary. People had to squint. Like, people were, like, complaining in my theater. It's like, I don't know what the heck is going on. I literally can't see anything. Well, look, we're in, we're in Eel Marsh Manor, for right. God's sake. Right. It's also it's a gloomy. movie. It's gloomy. It's awfully gloomy. It's fun. I, I appreciated the attempt at atmosphere, but I thought they overshot it by a lot. There are individual mm. shots, though, that are really quite lovely. The, the, the first morning, after all the kids and the teachers move into this creepy house, there's a shot where... Um, I'm blanking on the main actress's name, Phoebe. Phoebe Fox. Mm -hmm. Phoebe Fox. And she's standing next to this tree, and like the tree mirrors her profile and mirrors yes! her messy bun. That was a cool yes. shot. And, they'll, and, and the director, Tom Horton, not Tim Horton, <laughs> Tom Horton, right? Is that who it is? Well, I, we're gonna I look it up. Correct us on we YouTube. You're going to do it together. anyway. We do. It's, it's, it's a first time back. Give us some slack here. Um, but like he'll hold a shot for a long time to let you. I don't know, sink into the tension of it or appreciate the artistry of it. So that's a cool shot. And then there's a shot where there's a kiss that takes place and you see the shadow of the kiss against a, a concrete wall at the same time. Like great care is taken with some long tracking shots. Mm -hmm. I actually was impressed by this from a technical standpoint, and I wish that it didn't have to rely on the cheapy scares. I don't, for me, it's the scares aren't the problem. For me, it's the incredible thinness of the characters. Like you, not they, at they all. come. They come oh, in with the secrets. They have se secrets. Do not make you complicate. It's there's se more than secret, meets the uh, secrets. Secrets mean we're going to reveal something later. Secrets but they're not the your usual. Interactions they're not the usual meat puppets that you get in a horror movie where okay. they're just stacking up dominoes so you can then knock them over. These people at least feel like that they're coming into this with a backstory with. Uh, complications and the fact that they're going into a haunt, like I said, they're going into a haunted house already carrying this burden of death and destruction around them, I thought was a potentially interesting idea that the movie never ca mm -hmm. ca uh, capitalized. I will grant you that it's a potentially interesting idea and I appreciate that they have backstories, but having a backstory doesn't mean that what you're doing in the actual story is interesting or full of character. The kids are enormously poorly characterized. The adults ha each have that one thing that they're hiding, <laughs> but it doesn't actually inform the way that they act like, oh, I smile when it's when things are hard. Not a character. That's a character <laughs> trait. That's a character confusing a character trait for a character. When, when you're going to do like something with this much atmosphere, and you're going to try to do uh, tell a story about people who are haunted before they go into a haunting, which yes, is the right way to do a haunted house movie. Look at the haunting sometime or the Legend of Hell House. Mm. They're fantastic. Uh, but they have to inform the way that they behave, and then the way that they behave has to drive the story in an interesting way. Here, it's just we have a backstory, and we're going to react to things. Tom, That's not good filmmaking to me. Tom Harper. Tom Harper. Tom Harper. <laughs> the, the, the one I think my favorite thing about both of these movies is the road that disappears when the tide comes in. That's a great idea. That's a neat idea. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the road to really pay off, but I like the idea <laughs> a couple, of a road that disappears when the tide comes yeah, in. Yeah, a couple of times here where like they're on the road and it's raining and there's the threat that something bad might happen on the road. Like, and I, I thought out. I thought the setting of the fake. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's a there's spoiler. A, there's, a neat I'm not setting, say there's a neat setting towards there's the end. There's a thing that happens towards the end that's that is cool. It's a cool idea. And I appreciate that here's a horror movie that's all about killing children. Uh, yeah, which, the second one, the, the first one was about that too. Yeah, exactly. No, like I appreciate that because too often kids are like, oh, we got to save the kid from horror movie. No, kill the kid. They had the kid it makes it scary. They and also, I wanted these kids to die so bad. Oh. These kids are terrible. No. They're really just unlikable characters. Like, they're either really poorly characterized, or there's like that one mute kid who's just like, oh, yeah, no, when he talks, it's going to be really dramatic. Thanks. Please kill him fast. No, no, no. But you <laughs> he know lives what? Forever. He's, he's mute, but he comes up with really creepy drawings, drawings that right. foretell uh, what's going to happen. No. 
That never happened. No, it's so it's terrible. Different. I'll tell you, I can't wait for them to find Narnia. I'm like, just find Narnia. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Watching this movie made me want to see a serious film about people in their 20s who were traumatized by having been kids during the Blitz. Yes. Because whenever you see these movies, they either go to Narnia or it's like Hope and Glory where it's kind of like, ooh, this was sort of a lark and now let's go live in the country. Like, surely, it, this is like, there's got to be British PTSD among Teenagers in the 50s, 60s. Their yeah. upper lips were just no really one ever, stiff. No one ever talked about that. They all kept calm and carried on. Like I want, yeah. I want that movie. The but posters this is not works the, too well. This all right. Is not so, it. what are your numbers then, gentlemen? Uh, three point two. Okay. It's not unwatchable, but it's a bad movie. Okay. I gave it a what? You gave it a four point two. Four point two. Yeah, it's because fair. I mean, again, I do. I, I'm with you. I like the atmosphere. I could see what was going on, um, <laughs> uh, and I think there's 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 a potential of a movie here that didn't get made. But if you like sort of hammer atmosphere, that's got it. Space. You liked I, Ouija. I give it a four. So um, our average is a 3.4. It is at 23% on the tomato meter. So uh, not great, you know, early January horror fair. It's an early January horror film. All right, bye.